forward-looking statement slide. And I'd like to start off with a video that Bloomberg Television did about the company and the first implant at the Mayo Clinic. The clinician there uh, was Dr. Ray Ayezi, and if you could roll the video. In this week's edition of Wiring the World, the bionic eye may sound like science fiction, but now it is a reality. Bloomberg's Ramy Innocencio has that story. I'm waiting to see some waves here. For Alan Zarin, right here. many firsts. With wife Carmen at his side, it's his first time seeing the famous Ferris wheel at Santa Monica Pier. The thing is, he's totally blind. Has been the past 25 years from incurable eye decay called retinitis pigmentosa. But since February, he's seeing again with this wearable by Los Angeles-based Second Sight. What I see is a series of flashes of light, and the brighter ones, obviously, uh, like a door handle or a doorknob or a frame or something like that, uh, I'll be able to see that that is what it is. This is how it works. A camera on a pair of glasses transmits images wirelessly to a layer of 60 tiny electrodes on the retina inside the eyeball. Alan can't see fine features. The Argus 2 is still limited, but <laughs> he did see his wife again this February as the world's 15th person thesis. Carmen? Yeah. Back to Greenberg. Today, another first. Alan meets Bob Greenberg, the man behind his second sight. Give it a shot and see what happens. Bob also checks Alan's vision. Walking a white line on a black mat. I lost the line as I started walking. Over a series of tries. So, what do people see? Bob puts me in a simulator. This is a half moon. This is a triangle. This is a circle. Outside the research lab, Alan keeps exploring. This week at Disneyland. All right. Seeing Mickey Mouse. And is a shape like that? The Enchanted Castle. And this. Oh, there are. There. Technology, wiring up eyes to the world for a chance at second sight. Oh, look at that. So a little bit about a little bit about the company. So as you heard, the company is uh, restoring some useful vision to patients uh, who are blind. The uh, target population that I'll talk a little bit more detail about is a significant number of, of patients. Uh, the product is commercial stage, approved in the United States, Canada. EU, Turkey, and, uh, and elsewhere. The uh, company has also obtained reimbursement in portions of the US and Europe with a uh, strong financial position for a uh, med tech company. You heard uh, Frank earlier talk about the number of patients that are uh, legally blind throughout the world. Many of those patients can be ch uh, have cataracts and so, of, of, of course, have treatments available to them. But about 8 million patients today have no therapy, and those are the patients that were that we're working to address. Our, our approval in the United States today is for patients with retinitis pigmentosa, uh, which you heard a little bit about earlier. Uh, this is a, um, a hereditary disease, and uh, we're currently treating patients who have bare light perception or are completely blind with the disease. We have a clinical trial uh, in the UK going for dry macular degeneration and are in preclinical studies for a device that will treat all blindness. So for me, this started 25 years ago uh, at, when I was a medical student at Johns Hopkins when I met Eugene Duan and Mark Humayan, who had this crazy idea that we could electrically stimulate the retina of blind patients and restore vision. And fast forward 25 years, this is the Argus II. It consists of an implant that's implanted in an outpatient procedure. It's implanted in and around the eye. Once it's implanted, the patients can't feel the device. You can't see the device. It essentially becomes part of their eye. And as you heard, the patients wear a pair of glasses with an embedded video camera that's processed and gets wirelessly transmitted to this uh, long-lasting implant. One of the challenges, there were many technical challenges in producing uh, a long-lasting implant that interfaced to the one-ply wet tissue paper retina. Uh, the company has over 350 issued patents uh, that were the result of solving uh, those many problems. And, and a large part of the success of the company to date uh, goes to the board of directors. Uh, my, my passion has been to uh, move technologies from the uh, clinic um, uh, and beyond into commercialization. Uh, I sit on a number of, uh, in addition to Second Sites boards, uh, private, nonprofit, and for-profit companies. Al Mann, our uh, chairman emeritus and, and founder, uh, is a serial medical device entrepreneur who spent the last 50 years 
developing primarily implantable electronics, so devices like pacemakers, cochlear implants, and uh, implantable insulin pumps. Will McGuire, uh, our new CEO, is an experienced uh, medtech uh, veteran uh, with over 20 years of experience uh, coming from the cardiac and vascular space and uh, in growth stage medical device companies. Bill Link, of course, doesn't need an introduction uh, in this audience. Uh, Aaron Mendelson, another one of the company's founders, and Greg Williams, the uh, serial um, uh, entrepreneur in the jet engine space. So since this is an innovation conference, I thought I'd talk a little bit about some of our upcoming uh, R&D pipeline. So we have a new pair of glasses and externals that are, we'll be releasing next year. This is uh, important not just for the aesthetics, of course, and comfort that, that we believe it'll uh, provide to patients, but the processor in this new pair of glasses is about 25-fold faster than our current processor, which will allow us to upgrade the software. So much like upgrading your iPhone, will allow us to provide additional software that we, th that we think should be able to improve the quality of vision that these patients are seeing. And in the clinic, we've been able to show that half a dozen patients in the UK were actually able to see color vision using some software techniques that we've been working on. Uh, in addition, we'll be rolling out, we just got FDA approval, and we'll be rolling out in the first quarter a new fitting algorithm. So once these devices are implanted, uh, they have to be fit or adjusted, much like adjusting a, a pair of glasses. And uh, that process used to take three sessions and now can be done in less than one session. I mentioned we're also expanding into AMD. Uh, we have a feasibility pilot in Manchester, UK, with Palo Stanga, and the, uh, uh, that, that study will be fully enrolled next month. Uh, we've implanted three patients so far, uh, and uh, we have, with encouraging results thus far. And we'll be, we'll be reporting the results in the first half of next year uh, on that study. And perhaps the, the program that, that I'm the most excited about is uh, one that we call the Orion, and with this program, we have the potential to treat all blindness. And we're taking the Argus 2 implantable technology uh, with high resolution number of electrodes and interfacing to the nervous system. And in this case, we're going to bypass the optic nerve and go directly to the visual cortex or visual part of the brain. And although this sounds pretty high tech, uh, it's actually been done before. There are a number of groups uh, in the past that have taken wired systems and placed them on the visual cortex and produced phosphenes or pixels of light, much like our Argus II produces in the retina. Uh, but in many of those cases, the technology was very crude. It wasn't wireless, and uh, the wires would eventually break over time. So this will be the first time that a, uh, a full wireless system is, uh, is implanted. Uh, there's a clinical precedent for an, uh, another similar system in another space. Uh, Neuropace has an RNS system, which has been approved. Uh, just approved last year for epilepsy, and so there's, uh, there's, there's precedent for uh, safely stimulating the brain. So we're currently in preclinical studies with, uh, with this device and, and hope to be in patients uh, late next year. On the reimbursement front, uh, a number of patients, over 30 patients in the United States so far, have gotten preauthorized and have had uh, surgeries completed. We, uh, we're up to now over 150 implants worldwide. Uh, there are also a number of private commercial insurers that are, that are covering the Argus II. Over half a dozen private insurers are covering it, uh, as well as Medicare. There are Medicare codes for both the procedure and device, and so far three of the eight Medicare contractors have coverage policies in place. Uh, we're still having discussions with, uh, with CMS, uh, although CMS has set a, a pricing for next year, we're still having discussions on next year's pricing. Uh, in Europe, the product is reimbursed in Germany, France, and portions of Italy, and there are a number of other countries that are uh, where it's being evaluated. The, there are currently 31 centers around the world that are offering the Argus II technology, and you see the list here reads as a who's who uh, of ophthalmology. Number of awards the company's gotten. And I'll just point to the financials. The, uh, the device is seeing uptake. If you look at the first nine months of 2014, at $1.8 million, and uh, the first nine months of 2015 at 6.5. So we're seeing significant growth and importantly uh, swung from a gross uh, loss to a gross profit with margins in, this, in the mid-60s. And of course the company has a, a good cash portfolio and no outstanding debt. And uh, so with that, I'll uh, leave any follow-up. Uh, you can reach me at bob at secondsight.com. Thank you. <laughs>